Hey, what's up, Fight Family? This is Contemplate Boxing. So about last night, yesterday evening, we saw uh, on the main event of the DAZN card, we saw Demetrius Andre, WBO middleweight champion, face off against contender Jason Quigley. Now, leading up to this fight, we heard Demetrius Andre, you know, talk a lot about how, hey, this fight's going to be different. We're going to see something a little bit different from Demetrius Andre. Demetrius Andre was promising war. He wears the uh, Marvin Hagler war hat very often, or at least in his uh, last few fights. And he's promising war and violence. He's promising that he's going to get his opponent out of there. Excuse me. And we've heard this before from Demetrius Andre. Uh, his last few performances... We've heard Andre, you know, say he's going to uh, put on a certain performance. He's going to get these guys out of there. But what tended to be uh, the trend that we would actually see uh, from Andre is that Andre would start off, you know, very strong, very sharp. He would drop his opponent, probably drop them multiple times. But then he would seem to take his foot off the gas. You know, he would seem to be content with coasting to a very dominant, unanimous decision. And I do think that that frustrated a lot of fans. Unfortunately, when you have a fighter that, uh, when you have a boxer that won't get their opponents out of there, that is comfortable with going to a decision, a unanimous decision, um, especially if they're awkward, like Demetrius Andrade is, um, they tend to get a label as being a boring fighter. Um, and that's the label that Demetrius Andrade has picked up for himself, unfortunately. Uh, a lot of his critics will say, hey, Demetrius Andrade is a boring fighter. We don't really want to watch Andrade fight. Andrade might drop his opponent once or twice in the first two rounds, and then after that, he's just going to go to a decision. We're going to see a 12-round fight. Um, now... Last night, however, we actually did see Andrade um, fulfill what he said he was going to do. He went in there, looked very sharp, got Jason Quigley out of there, you know, in short fashion. And he looked good doing it. He looked very sharp. And so it was good to see that from somebody with Andrade's ability, somebody with Andrade's potential and skill level. So that was good to see. And it's good to see Andre finally show that type of killer instinct that we often want to see from fighters at this level. Um, you know, me personally, I do greatly appreciate a fighter that can be very technical. I do very much appreciate a fighter that can completely disarm their opponents and be able to just outperform them for 12 rounds. I do have an appreciation for that. On the other end... You know, I do also appreciate when a fighter will just get that guy out of there and move on to the next one. You know, um, at this level, uh, Jason Quigley should not be lasting 12 rounds with Demetrius Andrade. Some of the opponents that Andrade has had and has gone 12 rounds with, somebody at an elite level should not be allowing those opponents to go 12 rounds with them. Um, so Andre should be stopping fighters at this level and be getting them out of there early. Um, and this is something that Demetrius Andre seems to have finally determined within himself to actually do. So I'm actually very happy to see that. And hopefully... Fans and critics are happy to see the same. So it remains to be seen whether or not Demetrius Andre keeps this particular attitude and determination uh, about himself. With Jason Quigley, again, I believe Jason Quigley was ranked number 10 in the WBO. That is an opponent that he should have gotten out of there early. So it's good to see Andre do what we expect him to be able to do. Uh, so... It's on to the next one. Now, in regards to potential opponents for Demetrius Andrade, I know in the post-fight analysis, uh, the DAZN team had put up a list of fighters that Andrade could potentially face. They listed Gennady Golovkin. They mentioned, uh, they also listed Jamal Charlo. They listed Canelo Alvarez, Jaime Munguia, and 
I can't remember if they did. I believe they did also put Rio to Murata. As we know, Gennady Golovkin and Rio to Murata, they'll be meeting one another for unification in December. Um, so likely, well, I don't know about likely, but potentially, possibly, uh, Demetrius Andrade can face the winner between Golovkin and Murata. Uh, I have an issue. I do have some issue, and I am curious about the zone's decision to list Canelo Alvarez as a potential next opponent for Demetrius Andrade. Because as we know from the WBC uh, convention, Canelo and Eddie Reynoso have made the decision to move up to cruiserweight to fight WBC champion Elunga Makabu. Um, I find it very difficult to imagine Canelo moving up to cruiserweight to fight Makabu and then coming down to middleweight or even super middleweight to face Demetrius Andrade or anybody in those divisions, to be honest with you. Um, I don't see that happening. Moving up to cruiserweight you know, for potentially one fight and then going back down, dropping down two divisions to super middleweight or even dropping down three divisions to middleweight. I don't foresee Canelo going back to middleweight at all for the rest of his career, um, especially not for uh, Demetrius Andrade, especially considering that Canelo has already stated, if I remember correctly, that he'll never fight Demetrius Andrade. Um, so I... As much as fans probably do want that, as much as the zone, you know, or individuals at the zone may want that fight, I, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, for a number of reasons, like I said, I don't see Canelo moving up and then down like that, just jumping uh, up and down between divisions. I don't think that's good on any fighter's body, and I wouldn't recommend any fighter to do that. So I don't, I don't see that happening. Gennady Golovkin as a potential opponent, um, it's possible, but it's it's not likely. You know, Andrade has been calling out Golovkin for quite some time. He's been uh, seeming to want that fight against Golovkin for quite some time, for years, as a matter of fact. And Golovkin has seemed to show absolutely no interest in Demetrius Andrade. Uh, they are on the same network. You know, they're both on the zone. You know, they both work with Eddie Hearn, but yet that fight has seemed to be no closer to being made. And I, if I remember correctly, even Eddie Hearn has seen, has hinted at or even expressed himself that Gennady Golovkin is not interested in a Demetrius Andrade fight. Um, Eddie Hearn each time seems to be more interested in kind of deflecting uh, to a Jamal Charlo versus Demetrius Andrade fight. I don't think Andrade will ever get a Golovkin fight in his career. With that said, when I talk about Eddie Hearn seeming to deflect uh, any conversation about Andrade Golovkin or, you know, or Golovkin Andrade and Canelo Andrade seeming to deflect to Charlo Andrade, I don't think he's going to get a Jamal Charlo fight in his career either. Because as much as Hearn and Andrade have seemed to try to face Jamal Charlo, that fight still hasn't come to fruition over the course of years. Um, and I don't think it, it will happen. Jamal Charlo seems to flip-flop, you know, in regards to who he intends to fight and who he has a desire to fight and who he plans to fight. There have been times where we've seen Charlo mention uh, Andrade as the next opponent and Benavidez saying, hey, I want all of them. I want Golovkin, Canelo, you know, Andrade, Benavidez. But then later on, you know, when it comes to potentially making an Andrade fight, it, it, he seems very disparaging or he speaks very disparagingly about the matchup. So over the course of years with that fight not happening, I don't see that happening at all in either of their careers. Um, in regards to Jaime Munguia, you know, with the WBO, what we have seen is that with the WBO, particularly when a champion uh, moves up a division, they do have the option of becoming the mandatory challenger, you know, to the champion at the next division. 
um, Jaime Munguia has seemed to not have the desire to do that. So it really brings in the question whether or not Jaime Munguia is actually even interested in facing Demetrius Andrade. The name that has seemed to be on Munguia's lips for quite some time has rather been Gennady Golovkin. Um, so I don't really see Jaime Munguia having any desire to face Demetrius Andrade. For Demetrius Andrade, you know, it's an, it's an unfortunate position to be in. You know, he's a two-division champion. Uh, he is an Olympian, as he has stated, you know, multiple times, and his frustration was not being able to get some of these big fights. He's in a difficult position. Um, historically, we have seen some fighters where in order to get the fights that they really, really wanted, they ended up having to place themselves in disadvantageous positions. They had to make themselves vulnerable enough to where the names in a division would feel like it's worth the risk to actually face them. What Demetrius Andrade may have to do, he may have to move up to the next division. He may have to go up to 168 and try to face challenges there. Um, since he, over the course of years, has been unable to face the big names, the elite names at 160. If I remember correctly, you know, the first name that kind of comes to mind of a fighter that had to do this was Archie Moore. You know, Archie Moore throughout his, throughout his career, you know, had some troubles facing the guys that he really wanted to face. He had a hard time for a very long time fighting the fights, you know, that he really desired to face. If I remember correctly, you know, he ended up moving up to middleweight before he actually ended up moving. He was at middleweight before he ended up going up to light heavyweight. And then he occasionally went up to heavyweight, you know, to try to fight fights there. Wasn't phenomenal at heavyweight, you know, eventually got the fight against Marciano, you know, and got stopped. But, you know, he kind of had to do the same. He had to place himself you know, at dis in disadvantageous positions in order to get some of these big fights. You know, unfortunately, we're at a time now where, you know, fighters don't have to do a lot of the stuff that fighters back then had to do, fighters like Archie Moore, you know. So, but I do think, uh, in theory, you know, the concept, you know, kind of still remains the same. I think for Andrade, one thing that uh, comes to mind or one option that comes to mind, Demetrius Andrade, um, if he does move up to 168, you know, to actually uh, place himself in position to get opponents to believe that he's vulnerable enough to take the risk. Since Jamal Charlo has seemed uninterested or not willing to take the risk against David Benavidez, you know, Andrade could potentially move up to challenge someone like David Benavidez. Um, here's the other thing that uh, Andrade could do. Demetrius Andrade is the WBO 160-pound champion. Um, Demetrius Andrade could move up to 168 and petition the WBO to be the number one contender, to be the mandatory challenger for the WBO title. If uh, Canelo Alvarez, excuse me, does choose to return to 168, Demetrius Andrade will be his mandatory. Uh, that option, at least in my mind, I could be wrong. Somebody correct me if I am. That option is available for Demetrius Andrade. If Canelo chooses not to go back down to super middleweight, well, then Andrade would possibly then be fighting for the vacant WBO title potentially, you know, become a world champion in a third weight division. And then hopefully in that weight division, with him having come from a smaller weight division, uh, will be enough bargaining power and will be uh, tempting enough to other big names in that division, Benavidez, Caleb Plant, you know, to give uh, Demetrius Andrade such a fight. But those are just my thoughts. That's kind of just what I think. Fight family, let me know what you think. Hey, hope y'all been enjoying the fights. Hope you all enjoy the fight tonight between Terrence Bud Crawford and Sean Porter. Hey, peace. God bless.